Okay. All right. Good morning. We'll go ahead and get started with song number 299. Song 299. We find your place. You'll say we'll sing all three verses this morning. Song 299. Glory to his name. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Song 299. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to you, his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to you, his name. Oh, precious mountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. All right, remain standing, please. Amen. I want to welcome everyone to our services this morning. Hope y'all have had a good week. You know, it's a good day to have a good day. It's a wonderful day to have a good day. And I'm glad each and every one of you are here today. Looking forward to what God has in store for us through Brother Lee this morning and then our young preachers this evening. Looking forward to what God has for each and every one of us. Let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we do want to come to you, Father, and we want to say thank you again, Lord, for another day, Lord. If Brother Rick was hot this morning, Lord, you gave us a, another day for a reason, Lord. If you were finished with us, Lord, if you didn't have something for us to do, Lord, you would have called us home. But you've given us another day, Lord, another day to meet together with brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, another day to hear the word of God preached, another day to hear the gospel, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless it, Lord, that you would be able to as he preaches this morning, Lord, that you would fill him with your spirit, Lord, fill him with your power and use him in a a great and mighty way, Lord. Use them in a way, Lord, where you receive the glory for it. So when we leave here, Lord, we can look back and say, this was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Lord, we ask that you'll just bless each and every person here today, Lord, that you would feed their hearts, feed their souls, Lord, with what they need from your word, Lord. We love you. Thank you again for all that you do in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. If you take your hymn, we'll turn to song 300. Song 300, Count Your Blessings. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. This morning, song number 300, 300, count your blessings, verses 1, 2, four. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. 
count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Wonderful singing, thank you. And as far as announcements go, it is sinus season, our, our favorite season of, well, you got so many seasons. I guess the Kings have kind of learned about the winters now, the four or five different winters we get. And now we get into uh, sneezing season and uh, pollen season and all these other seasons. And, no, but uh, that's all right. That's that's fine. I'm just thankful you're here this morning. Sneezing's not and whatever you're doing, you're here. And that's what matters. And we're thankful for that. Uh, as far as their announcements go, the Camp Victory is having their May Madness. That's this coming Friday. That is an all-night event, so please be in prayer for that. My wife and I are going to head over and try to help them get things ready, get the tabernacle set up, get the sound system hooked up, and uh, a few of the cabins cleaned, so everything will be ready to go. Pray for the preaching. It's a, a wonderful ministry. It's a time, it's a ministry we support, and it's affecting many uh, of the people here at our, our church. I surrender to preach there. I believe Christopher and Anthony both surrendered there. Uh, of course, Brother Mike, who who pastored here for 18 years, it's his brother who runs the camp, uh, and it's it's invested a lot into to many of our people. So pray for the gospel that'll go out this coming Friday, Saturday, uh, at the the May Madness. The Sunday after that, this coming Sunday, a week from today, we'll have Evangelist Davy Draper out of Williamsburg. Looking forward to having him. Then the 13th, we'll have our ladies luncheon. Uh, Miss Betty Griffiths will be speaking at 11 a.m. We'll have a, a few door prizes and uh, some different things set up for, for them to do. I'll give Miss Betty some more this week, and we'll kind of go over the fine-tuning of it. But we'll have that ready the uh, 13th at 11 a.m. Then there will be a meal provided afterwards for all the ladies. I'll need some men to help volunteer that Saturday to come and to serve. Uh, we'll get with the ladies either after service today or tonight and figure out exactly kind of what you all would like to eat and then men we're the ones cooking it preparing it and we're going to serve them just as a way to say thank you to the ladies of southeastern baptist church uh the day before mother's day and then of course the 14th is mother's day we'll celebrate our women again and i, I don't think there's anything wrong with that you look through the word of god i think you see that christ honored many women uh the women were the ones who tended to him more so than most of the men and uh, we want to say thank you, and we appreciate our women. And we'll do the same for the men come Father's Day. Uh, May the 30th through June 2nd is camp meeting over at the camp. Uh, please make uh, plans to go over, even if it's just for a service or two. Make plans to go, eat a supper with us over there, and enjoy some good preaching, good fellowship. Looking forward to that. And then I got to talk with the Williams family this week. We've had them in a few times. It's their camper sitting back here behind the church. They let us use it last year when we were going through some struggles there. Uh, love the family. They are one of the dearest families, one of my favorite families to be around. They are going to do VBS with us this year. We are planning our VBS. I think since I started coming here, I started in 04. I think we've had maybe two VBSs the whole time I've been here. So we're looking forward to this. I'm going to get with them and kind of talk it over, see if we want to do a Monday through Friday or a Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, the way they like to do it is they plan it so that Sunday is a big day. Uh, they'll kind of build throughout the week, and then Sunday is a good day to try to get not just the kids there, but their families, and that's what we're kind of going to plan. Our theme is going to be heroes. Everybody likes the superheroes, the Marvel things, and 
Uh, we, we, you can do a lot with that. But I want the, the kids to also realize our hometown heroes. We're going to get with the police department, our fire department. They've volunteered multiple times to bring over some of their equipment and show the kids. Let them see some hometown heroes, real heroes. And then, of course, the heroes of the faith through the Word of God. So that's going to be the theme. And that will be July, the week of July the 17th, uh, the 16th through the 23rd, somewhere in that area. So we're looking forward to that. Um, only other announcement would be, I guess, for those who may have missed the business meeting, we voted to do monthly meetings. Uh, Y'all had suggested it, and we had looked into it, and we decided that would be the easier route. It is less we have to do all at once. It's just um, something's up. We can have our meeting and then be done with it. Just one item business here and there, too. Uh, I, I figure most months we may not even have uh, a meeting. So, But it is going to be the last Sunday of every month. And then the other, I guess, main item of business was the uh, safety class that we're working on for our church. We're going to get the sheriff's department and talk with them and some others and see about finding a good plan for our church if something ever were to happen. People to lock the doors, watch the doors, watch the security, everything that that the, they did. Uh, I know that to the world looks probably bad, but David, he protected the sheep. David, as a shepherd, had a sling and a rock, and he protected his sheep from uh, his father's sheep, from uh, the bears. He protected them from the lions. And then when it came to God's children, he protected them from a, a, a Goliath. So I don't think it is wrong at all for, for churches to have these kind of precautions in, in stores. So we're going to get with them and figure that out uh, as soon as we possibly can. So I believe that is all the announcements. This time I'm going to go ahead and take up our offering. Brother Christopher, Brother Rick, if you don't mind helping us with the offering this morning. Brother Rick, if you don't mind asking blessing. All right, you take your hymnals one more time this morning. Song number 260, song 260, Blessed Assurance. We'll sing all three verses this morning. Song 260, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of wrath. Now burst on my sight, angels descending, green from above, 
Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long perfect submission all is at rest i in my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Wonderful singing. Thank you so much this morning. It matters so little how much you may own. The places you've been or the people you've known. For it all comes to nothing when placed at his feet. It's nothing to Jesus, just memories to keep. Only one life. So soon will pass only what's done for Christ will last only one chance to do his will. So give to Jesus all your days. It's the only life that pays. When you recall, you have my one love. You can take all the treasures from far away lands. Take all the riches you can hold in your hands. And take all the pleasures your riches can buy, but what will you have when it's your time to die? The days pass so swiftly, the months come and go, the years melt away like new fallen snow. Spring turns to summer, and summer to fall. Autumn brings winter, then death comes to call. Only one life so soon will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one chance to do his will. So give to Jesus all your days. It's the only life that pays when you recall. You have but one life. All right, if you take your Bibles this morning, John chapter number 14.
John chapter number 14. I'm trying not to be long this morning. I'm tired. I think about three and a half hours of sleep last night. So, uh, last night I had, my wife and I take shifts. It's the first time we've done this with any of our three children. My wife, for Levi and Ellie, uh, actually just took care of them 24-7, and I just showed up whenever I was, felt like it. But with, but with Titus, <laughs> with the other two kids, um, so I usually take over somewhere between mm, 9 o'clock at night and midnight, depending on what time Ashley wants to go to bed. And then I'll stay up till uh, with him till uh, oh somewhere around one, two, three, four, depending on the night. And uh, last night, uh, I guess I took over a little bit after ten, and uh, he slept and slept, didn't move. He's supposed to get up at midnight and drink his bottle. He didn't. Finally, about two o five, I woke him up. I was like, "You got to eat something, buddy." And then he went back to sleep, and then actually got up about an hour and a half later. So I finally went to bed somewhere between three thirty and four this morning, and uh, he was miserable after the, she got him. I guess I should have just stayed up with him because she had nothing but problems with him all night long. And uh, well, I say all night long, kind of half the morning long. But uh, so uh, they're exhausted this morning. So uh, we pray for them. And uh, but John chapter number fourteen. I'm going to read uh, just a couple verses here, and then. Uh, uh, jump into a message this morning. Most of this morning's going to be uh, introduction and uh, got a couple points at the very end, but uh, uh, try not to be too long this morning. But John chapter 14, verse number one, the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on. And uh, number two, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's pray one more time this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to preach, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would use me, that you speak through me, Lord, that we would be a blessing to someone this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I just read six verses out of my favorite chapter in the Bible. John chapter 14. I love the book of John, but John chapter 14, John chapter 15, 16, 17. I love these uh, four chapters. Uh, in the Bible. And they, these four chapters are situated right between John 13 and John 18. Makes sense. 14, 15, 16, you know. But John 13, verse number one, you find now, therefore, uh, or now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. I love that verse. Uh, at the end of that, he says, uh, uh, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them. And to the end. So this is the feast of the Passover, and we know we know the story. We just had Easter a couple weeks ago. I think it was a couple weeks ago. It's been a long one. Uh, we just we just celebrated Easter a couple few weeks ago, and then uh, uh, and then this is a, this is the story of of, uh, of you know right before the crucifixion. So you have the Passover, and then uh, and then you have um, they're eating. And then when their meal's done, Jesus starts talking here in John chapter number fourteen, and he starts off with John fourteen one through six. And uh, he announces, you know, his coming for them. He says, look, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. And this is a very encouraging, I love John 14, 15, 16. Um, They're very encouraging books. In fact, uh, John 14, verses 1 through 6, you found Jesus announcing his coming. Uh, verses 7 through 12, you talk, Jesus is talking about how he and the Father were one person. Um, and then verse number 13 and 14. Um, he talks about our privilege with prayer. Uh, prayer. Uh, I love these two verses. In verse number 13, he says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's a promise when it comes to prayer. Um, verse number 15 through 26, it's the promise of the Holy Spirit. So at this point in all of history, the Holy Spirit has never indwelled in man permanently. And Jesus says here in verse number 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you, and I will need, 
I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. These are promises because Jesus knows that he's about to uh, he's about to be crucified. And then he's going to have to permanently go back up to the Father for the time being. Then he'll come back, hopefully soon. And uh, But uh, he's talking to his disciples. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. And we and I have preached out of this, uh, this chapter several times when it comes to funerals and uh, even church services. Or church services that feel like funerals. Uh, we've all been there too. Uh, but uh, but uh, we have the promise of the Holy Spirit from verses 15 through verses 26. Uh, and then uh, verse number 27 through 31, we have uh, Christ is talking about his peace. Um, I'm going to read verse number 27. Uh, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And there's that phrase again, let not your heart be troubled. Um, verse number uh and then that goes through the end of this chapter. Um, and then verse number or chapter 15, verses 1 through 14, Jesus starts talking about the vine and the branches. Verse number 1, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So we have Jesus talking about the vine and the branches, um, the first 14 verses of chapter 15. And then John 15, verses 15, 16, and 17, uh, he talks about our relationship with him. Uh, and he's talking to his disciples. In fact, I was reading a commentary, Matthew Henry's commentary, and he said this is probably the most intimate three verses in the entire Bible when it comes to Jesus and his disciples. In verse number 15, he says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. And so Jesus talking to his disciples here, he says, Look, I've called you friends. And, uh, and then verse number 18 through 27, we find that uh, Jesus is talking about what the world's attitude uh, how they're going to view Christians, and that's not a good attitude. He says, the world, uh, in verse number 18, he says, if the world hates you, you know that it hateth me before it hated you. So Jesus goes into this. It's not a very comforting few verses, but Jesus covers that. He covers a lot here in chapter 14, 15, and 16. Um, verse number, and so that's uh, verses 18 through 27 uh, to the end of the chapter in John 15. John chapter number 16 uh, starts in verse number 1. Jesus starts warning of persecution. He said, they're going to hate you. Now they're going to persecute you. So it went from being encouraging, and then I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Hey, you get a promise in prayer. The world's going to hate you. Then they're going to persecute you. So he's covering a whole lot here in these three chapters. And then verse number 7 through 11, Jesus starts talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is the, verse number 7, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not... A way the comforter will not come unto you, uh, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. So he starts talking. He says, "Look, it's a, it's important, but this is going to be the work of the Spirit." And then verses 12, 13, um, 14, and fifteen. Um, I have read these chapters, this chapter, several times in my life, and it, it hit me. Um, verse number. Um, I found this uh, very interesting. Um, verse number twelve. He says, "Let's see." I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus tells his disciples, look, I have a lot to tell you, but either you're not going to understand it or it's going to be too much for you or I don't have the time. Um, but then he says, verse number 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but so whatsoever he shall or he, but whatsoever he shall hear, then shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. And so Jesus says here, look, when the Spirit comes, he's not going to speak of himself. In fact, what he tells you, so when the Spirit talks to us, he said, it's me talking to you through him. Jesus said he will hear me, and he will tell you. So the Holy Spirit tells us what Jesus tells us. And that, that just hit me. That's not really part of the message this morning. But interesting that, you know, the Holy Spirit, when we, when we, feel, the, when we feel the moving of the Holy Spirit, it's not so much the Holy Spirit itself. It's Jesus telling him which direction to take us. It's very comforting to know that. Um, and then John chapter number 16, verses 16 through 33, uh, Jesus starts talking again about his uh, uh, death and resurrection uh, all through the end of this chapter. So we have there, we have three chapters. Very comforting. Uh, Jesus says, look, let not your heart be troubled. Verse number one of chapter 14, you believe in God, believe also in me. And then we're at chapter 15, 16, then you have chapter number 17. All chapter number 17 is it's a prayer. It is a word-for-word -word prayer that Jesus prays right before chapter number 18. And so chapter 17, verse 1, these words spake Jesus, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, 
the hour has come, glorify thy son, so that the son may glorify thee. And then all the way through chapter number 17, he uh, he's praying. And then verse number 1 of chapter 18, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book Kedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. So, so, so right after eating supper, the Passover, the Last Supper, we've all seen the, the painting, the Last Supper. So right after eating, Jesus talks to his disciples, three intimate, very detailed, this is what's going to happen. He said, I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come back. Thomas is like, where are you going? We don't know where you're going. We don't even know how to get there. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh from the Father but by me. I'm like, you know, we... Some of the disciples get a bad rap. Like Peter, Peter gets a bad rap. You know, he denied Christ. He he uh, he uh, he cursed. And uh, we talk about how he he speaks before he before he thinks, or he he acts before he thinks. And, and we give Peter, but Thomas, I think Jesus was probably he's like, where'd you come from? Why did you? so Thomas? Uh, we'll talk about Thomas here in a little bit. But all of these, these three chapters, uh, four chapters here. 14, 15, 16, 17. Very comforting chapters. He's talking to his disciples. And uh, he says all of this. But you know, someone was missing. Somebody was missing. Jesus covered all of this. He says, look. He says, I I'm, I'm leaving. I'm preparing a place for you. He said, I'm sending you the comforter. He says, um, I'm sending you my peace. I'm giving you the promise of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you what... Uh, the the promise of prayer. He said, I'm giving you all this. But one person was missing. If you go back to John chapter number 13, verse number 21. The Bible says here, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of him, or be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop. When I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said unto him, That thou doest, doest quickly. Now no man at the table knew. For what intent he spake this unto him, for some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus said unto him, Buy those things which we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Judas was not there. He missed all of that. Those four chapters, he missed the prayer in chapter number 17. He missed everything that Jesus said. He was not there. And this morning, I just want to preach on this thought. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. So we know we know you know Judas was was used to to bring about the crucifixion. But this morning there are four ways we can miss out. And uh, I want to give you these four things quickly, and we'll be done this morning. Four ways we can miss out. Judas missed out on everything that Jesus had just said in chapter 14, 15, 16, and seventeen. And this morning we can also miss out. There's other people in the Bible that missed out. We'll cover these this morning. First way we can miss out is disobedience. Um, if you go all the way back to the very beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter number 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And then you go, uh, Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had the perfect relationship with God. One that we could only dream of. God met them personally, in person, every single morning. Physically, every morning. They had this relationship with God that no one else in the entire world will ever have until we get to heaven. They had this relationship with God, one-on-one, -on -one, every single morning. And they missed out on that opportunity by disobeying. God said, look, you can eat of every tree in the garden except for one. And they, they disobeyed. And then you have Moses. If you look, think back on Moses, Moses led the children of uh, Israel through the wilderness 40 years and then God said, look, speak unto the rock, that it bring forth water. Moses hit the rock, disobeyed, and God said, look, you can see the promised land, but you're going to miss out. You're not going to get a chance to go in, and you're going to miss out this morning because of disobedience. And then uh, a little bit later on in history, you have King Saul. King Saul, you know uh, a story that uh, the children of Israel are like, we want a king, we want a king. God says, you don't want a king, 
Samuel says, you don't need a king. People's like, we want a king. So they get King Saul and God says, look, I want you to kill the Amalekites. I want you to kill them all, kill the king, kill the, the children, kill the women, kill everything, kill their oxen, kill their sheep, kill their donkey, kill everything. Oh, and then we know that uh, he disobeyed. He partially obeyed. He, he killed almost everybody, but kept the king alive and kept the best of the sheep and the best, best of the oxen. And Samuel says, God said to kill him. He said, oh, I did. He said, then why do I hear sheep bleeding in the background? And it's like, oh, the people. Because of you disobeyed. So disobedience will cause us to miss out on things that God wants us to have. Just like Adam and Eve missed out on that relationship. And then because, of course, we know because of them, sin entered into the world. And well, all the problems we have today is because of Adam and Eve. They missed out on We missed out on a perfect world because of Adam and Eve. But they missed out because of disobedience. And then number two, we can miss out because of not listening. Um, Revelation chapter number two. I'm going to read a few verses here. You'll find a common theme. You don't have to turn there. Revelation chapter number two. The first one is verse number seven. Revelation 2, 7, the Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith in the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Uh, verse number 11, chapter 2, verse number 11, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Verse number 17 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. In verse number 29, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So, we find this common, common theme here in this chapter. It says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Now, uh, a lot of people hear. Um, I can tell Levi. Levi is a perfect example of me telling him something. He looking me straight in the face, and then I ask him to repeat it. And he said, uh... The problem is it's not just children. It's adults. Uh, and <laughs> as well. Uh, at work, let's see. Um, you can ask somebody to do something, and they'll be just pretending, or I guess they legitimately look like they are listening to you, and then you're like, did you even hear a word I said? I'm sure my wife is watching this this morning. She said, yeah, you're preaching to yourself this morning. Um, and, uh, but we all have this ability to hear but not listen. Um, and uh, this, so, so uh, if the Bible says something one time, it's important. If it says it's two times, you might want to pay attention. If it says it three times, or in this case, I wrote down four, it's probably really, really important that you pay attention. Um, and uh, so I bring this about to Mar go back to uh, Mark chapter number eight. Um, I love, uh, I've been looking, reading through the book of Mark. Um, I don't remember what Brother Eddie was preaching on exactly on Easter, um, but uh, got me to thinking. So I've been reading through the Easter story over the past couple of weeks, and um, I already had this thought in my mind. Just didn't know which direction to take or how to start. So I told my wife, I said, I know where I'm bending up, but I have no idea how to start. So, luckily, we got started, and now we're almost finished. But uh, Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, verses, uh, um, I'm not going to read the whole, whole chapter, but the outline of Mark chapter 8 is verses 1 through 9, Jesus feeds 4,000 people. Uh, it says, in those days, the multitude began, or being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him. It said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. That's a long time to go without food. And if I send them away, fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for uh, divers of them came from far. And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break and gave to his disciples and set before them. And they did set them before the people. And they had a few small fishes. And he blessed and commanded them to set uh, them also before them. And they did eat and were filled. And they took up the broken meat that was left, seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. So here we find uh, chapter uh, 8, verses 1 through 9. We have Jesus feeding the 4,000, uh, verses 10 through 21. Uh, Jesus goes into a ship with his disciples, and he talks to them, gives them a couple of parables. Now I'm getting to that. Verses 22 through 26, um, they come to the other side. Uh, and they heal a blind man. And then uh, verse number 27, this is where I want to pick up here. 
It says, Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi, and by the way he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto them, Oh, unto him thou art the Christ. And he charged them that day that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Let's go to chapter number 9. Chapter number 9, verses 1 through 13, you have the transfiguration. We're not going to read that. Um, verses 14 through 29, um, Jesus and Peter, James, and John come down from the mountain after transfiguration, and we find that the disciples are trying to cast out a, a dumb spirit. That's what the Bible calls it, a dumb spirit out of a man, and they can't do it. And then Jesus cast him out, and the disciples are like, how can you do this? And Jesus says, this one can't be cast out without fasting and praying. And then he gets down to verse number, so uh, that's uh, through 29, verse number 30. Here is where I want to pick up. Um, you find that, and they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and... He would not that any man should know it. So they go to, through Galilee. He said, look, don't, he doesn't want anybody to know where he's at at this point. Uh, verse number 31, For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. This is the second time Jesus has told his disciples about him's crucifixion and him rising again the third day. Let's go to chapter number 10. Uh, chapter number 10, again, an outline, verses 1 through 12, we have uh, Jesus uh, uh, Jesus teaches about divorce. Uh, the Pharisees asked him a question, and he goes into, so we're, we're going to skip that. Uh, verses 1 through 12, 13 through 16, uh, we find that Jesus blesses children. They brought the young children to him, verse number 13, and he blesses them. Um, verses 17 through 22, uh, you have the rich uh, young ruler. Uh, verses 23 through 27, you find that uh, Jesus makes this statement um, that uh, um, that uh, basically it's uh, he talks about the it's easier for a um, camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into heaven and basically the principle here is that with all with God all things are possible in verse number 27 uh, it says Jesus looking upon him saith with men it is impossible but not with God with God all things are possible and that's the principle he was teaching there in verses 23 through 27. Verses 28 through 31, we find that uh, Jesus says that, look, uh, if you're faithful, uh, you'll be rewarded. And then we're going to pick up verse number 32. Verse number 32. And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. And he took again the twelve and began to tell them about things, or what things would happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. And they shall mock him, and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him. And the third day shall rise again. So again, so I'll give you the outline of these chapters to let you realize that this is three separate events. Things have taken place between each one of these. Jesus saying, look, I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to rise again in three days. I'm be crucified. And rise again in three days. In fact, the last time he tells them here in chapter number 10, he is very detailed what's going to happen. He said, look, we're going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to get delivered to the chief priest and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn me to death and deliver me to the Gentiles. They're going to mock me, scourge me, spit upon me, kill me, and I'm going to come back in three days. He is very detailed about what's going to happen. You know why? I think he wanted his disciples there that morning when he rose from the grave. Now, they had seen Jesus resurrect Lazarus. They had seen him uh, raise, um, I think, maybe a couple more people. Um, well, you had the, the, the one girl, and then you had uh, the, the funeral as they were passing by, and Jesus raised the, the young man up. So they had seen him raise people from the dead before, but this miracle would have only been able to be seen once where someone raises themselves from the grave. And no one was there to see it. They missed out because they weren't listening. I wonder how many times we're in church and a preacher preaches something that God has exactly for us. And we're thinking about, oh, do I want pizza today? Or do I want pork or roast? I'm not sure what we're having for lunch either. But uh, we're thinking about everything else. We're kind of hearing because we're in the same room. It goes in as somehow. We're just not paying attention. 
And so we're gonna so we miss out because we're not listening. And then thirdly, this morning, we already talked about uh, a little bit about this, but uh, we miss out because we're not there. We talked about Judas; he missed out on on all these promises that God uh, that Jesus gave in chapter 14, 15, 16 of uh, John. Uh, Judas missed them all because he wasn't there. But uh, and we talked about Judas. But uh, John chapter number twenty, someone else missed missed out because they weren't there. John chapter number twenty, verse number nineteen. And it says, then the same day at the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where his where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto him, Peace be unto you. And when he had so, uh, so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So Thomas wasn't there. Uh, so Jesus comes. This is this is right after the uh, the, the the resurrection, and uh, he's in the same day. It's at evening, and uh, so they're in the room. They're in the upper room. All the doors are shut. They're locked. They're hiding in fear of the Jews because they're like, oh, they killed Jesus. They're going to come after us next. Um, and so they're hiding, and Jesus appears right in the midst of them and says, look, he says, look, and he prays on them the Holy Ghost. He said, here, take the Holy Ghost. This is the comforter that I promised you just a few chapters before. Um, he said, look, breathe, take the Holy Ghost. Peace be unto you, verse number 19. And then um, and then the verse number 22, he said, when he said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Thomas missed out on this experience because he wasn't there. The Bible still says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25. Let me read it. It says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I don't know how many times we will miss out on something that God has for us just because we're not there. And uh, so, and then lastly this morning, uh, we can miss out because of unbelief. The word unbelief is found 16 times in the Bible. And uh, I didn't write them all down, um, but it's found 16 times in the Bible. And, and you read, uh, the, people miss out all the time because of unbelief. The very first one, I believe, is um, Noah. If you go back to and read the story of Noah, we know that God says, look, Noah, I need you to go build an ark. Noah believed. He and his family, they were saved. There were billions of people. Probably more people then than there are now. Billions of people on the earth, and they all missed out on being in the ark because of unbelief. The very first uh, major um, uh, experience of missing out because of unbelief is the worldwide flood. Everything's wiped out, including all the people, because of unbelief. But uh, Matthew chapter number 13, I'm going to read this uh, passage real quick, and then um, we'll be done here in just a couple minutes. But Matthew chapter 13, verse number 53. We find here that Jesus, uh, it says, It came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man and this wisdom and these mighty words? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? And when he has, and whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So here we find Jesus coming. He's, he's, he's teaching in his, you know, where he grew up. And they're like, who's this? Why is he saying this? Is this not the carpenter's son? Don't we know him? Where did he get all this? And, and because of their unbelief, they missed out on many mighty works. See, Jesus says he... The Bible records he didn't do anything. He didn't do any mighty works because of their unbelief. And uh, so I don't know how many times, that, you know, miracles that God wants to do in our lives, we miss out on because of unbelief. But the most important one this morning is don't miss out on heaven because of unbelief. I uh, hope and pray this morning that everybody has accepted Christ as your Savior. Um, Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no way around that. There's no way over that, around that, under that. You can only get to heaven through Jesus Christ. Um, 
in the very last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 15, the Bible says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This morning, don't miss out. We can miss out on a lot of things because of disobedience. We'll miss out because of not listening, which is part of being hum human, I'm afraid. Um, and we'll miss out because sometimes we're not present, we're not there. But don't miss out because of unbelief. And I pray and hope this morning that everybody's been saved. So with every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, no one looking around, I pray and hope this morning that uh, you don't miss out. Don't miss out on heaven because of unbelief. Maybe this morning you're sitting here and you're saying, you're thinking to yourself, you know what, Brother Lee, I don't know I'm saved. I don't know um, that heaven's my home. I've never accepted Christ as my Savior. If that's you this morning, if you'll just slip your hand up, slip it back down, don't want to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. That's you this morning. If not, maybe this morning you're thinking, you know what, maybe maybe I haven't missed out on a couple of things. And I pray, and, and it's, it's my prayer this morning that don't miss out anymore. If that's you this morning, be like, Pray for me that uh, I, I won't miss out on anything that God has for me. If that's you this morning, and to follow the place that's going to burn. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. Lord, we ask Lord you to bless this invitation. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you stand to your feet, no one looking around, the altar's open. If maybe something that was preached this morning spoke to your heart and you need to do business with God, the altar's open this morning. All right, I want to thank everyone for their attention this morning. Anybody got anything they'd like to say or testimony or anything before we leave this morning? No? Questions, comments, concerns, emotional outburst? That would be my sign. All right. If not, we'll go ahead and be dismissed in a word of prayer this morning. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father, Lord, once again, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. Lord, we ask Lord to... Um, Use these words that uh, you've spoken through me, Lord, that uh, help me be, be me personally be mindful, Lord, and just not to miss out, Lord, on some things because of things I have control over, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, now to be with us as we go our separate ways, Lord. We ask, Lord, to give us safety, bring us all back to the